Good morning. Welcome to Trinity Online. It is great to be together. If you are joining us for the first time online, I want you to know that there is a, uh, a worship guide that will help you navigate your way through the service and give you all of the words where you can see them. Um, and it, if you printed it out, it would look like this. The link to it is in the comment section. So please feel free to click on that link and um, make the PDF worship guide available to yourself. You can just leave it on your screen. You don't have to print it out the way I do, but I like to do that. Um, and so now we are gathering as an online community for worship. And the gathering is both you know, bringing in different individuals into the group and the group is growing as you can see in the upper left-hand corner of the Facebook live screen telling us that there are now uh, 40 something people here. But it's also a matter of gathering your, your own internal resources, your spirit, your heart, your soul, your emotions, your thoughts. And so to help us gather ourselves, we start with uh, a beautiful piece of music, uh, uh, an organ prelude played by Paul Cena based on um, Handel's theme from the Messiah, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. <laughs> Let us pray. We wake to the forgiveness of a new day. We wake to the freedom to begin again. 
We wake to the mercy of the sun's redeeming light, always new, always gift, always blessing. We wake to the forgiveness of this new day. Amen. So let me say welcome one more time as you all are gathering together in this online space uh, for Trinity Online to be together in worship. The embodiment of our togetherness is the comment section on Facebook Live. Um, that's where by making a comment there, by saying hello, good morning, or whatever, it's like you're looking sideways to see who else is sitting next to you in the pews. When we're really in church, and boy, are we looking forward to that time. When we're really in church, we're able to do that silently. You know, you can just look. But here, you need to talk out loud in church, and you do that in the comment section. So don't feel shy. Uh, be present to one another in the comments. And as we think about things, as we talk about things, and as we pray for each other and for the world, feel free to use the comments section to share your thoughts and prayers with one another th throughout the course of the service. We are indeed looking forward to a time when we'll all be vaccinated and it'll be safe for us to be close together in large groups. That time is not yet. So here we are, but um, I'm thinking and talking to other people in the congregation to make plans for when we will be able to gather in person in the building. I'm hoping sometime in June, um, but nothing is concrete yet because we have to do it all according to where the numbers of the pandemic are uh, at the time. So I can't set a date, but I'm, I'm looking forward to and hoping that we'll be able to gather in person beginning in June. In the meantime, here we are, and this is not virtual church, this is real church, and I am really grateful to be with you, to be here, and I'm very grateful to be able to tell you that this morning we have two very special guests who will be uh, speaking with you a little later, Kara Stratton and uh, Esther Ogunmola from Justice for Migrant Families. They will share some of Esther's story and tell us about the work that Justice for Migrant Families is currently doing. That'll happen after we exchange the piece a little bit later. So one of the other ways that we are together online is singing, even though I'm singing in my space and you can't hear me and you're singing in your space and I can't hear you, all of us can hear the four singers, uh, the soloists from the choir who will help lead us in singing uh, the opening hymn. And so just, Use your imagination to feel their presence and to feel my presence and everybody else's presence as we sing together, Awake, Arise.
The first reading is from the book of Acts. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them, and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The middle reading is a poem called Insufficient Knowledge by Bronwyn Lee. You have to start with insufficient knowledge. Yes, this, and yes, praise be, then this. You have to have that kind of courage. A breath, a step, a word, it's to your advantage to begin. There isn't time to wait for grace. You have to start with insufficient knowledge. Think of the first human to sail over the edge of the world or a base jumper departing an edifice. You have to have that kind of courage. Break your fists, your back, your brain, punch yourself in opening. This is all there is. You have to start with insufficient knowledge of the heart, that higher organ, which from time to time catches us by surprise and we startle with the kind of courage that will spend it all, not hold back, wage everything, all, right away, every time, yes. You have to love with insufficient knowledge. You have to have that kind of courage. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Good morning, Trinity. The reading this morning is from the Gospel of John. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were locked in the room where the disciples were for fear of the temple authorities. Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Having said this, the Savior showed them the marks of crucifixion. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw Jesus, who said to them again, peace be with you. As Abba God sent me, so I'm sending you. After saying this, Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you retain anyone's sins, they are retained. It happened that one of the 12, Thomas, nicknamed Didymus or twin, was absent when Jesus came. The other disciples kept telling him, we've seen Jesus. Thomas's answer was, I'll never believe it without putting my finger in the nail marks and my hand in the spear wound. On the eighth day, the disciples were once more in the room, and this time Thomas was with them. Despite the locked doors, Jesus came and stood before them saying, peace be with you. Then to Thomas, Jesus said, take your finger and examine my hands. Put your hand into my side. Don't persist in your unbelief, but believe. Thomas said in response, my Savior and my God. Jesus then said, you've become a believer because you saw me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs as well, signs not recorded here. 
in the presence of the disciples. But these have been recorded to help you believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the only begotten, so that by believing you may have life in Jesus' name. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. I want to get to hear from Kara and Esther as soon as possible, so I'll be brief, but I have to say I always feel the need to speak up on behalf of Doubting Thomas. When I am looking for a tool, a new camera, or some kind of gadget, I learn as much as I can about that type of gadget so that I can be sure that the one I'm getting will be able to do what I want it to do. Now, don't work too hard at trying to understand what I'm saying. I'm only trying to point out something that's obvious. I want to know that my new gadget is going to work before I plunk down my money to buy it. Right? Makes sense? That's just normal human behavior. I do it, you do it, we all do things like that. We want to see that the thing that you're about to buy works. So if you're in the market for a new savior, and I'm sure all of you have been at one time or another, you're going to want the one that you're looking at to give you a demonstration of some superpowers, right? You're going to want to see how strong this potential savior is before you plunk your money down. Isn't it remarkable? that when Thomas was told that Jesus had been seen alive after he had been dead, Thomas did not insist on seeing signs of victory and strength in order to believe that Jesus had been raised from the grave. Instead, he insisted that he needed to see signs of Jesus's suffering and death. When John's gospel was written, the author put scolding words in Jesus's mouth. They seem to be directed at Thomas, but they were really not directed at Thomas. They were directed at us and people like us, the readers, people who would later hear Thomas's story and hear it as an inspiration to trust in the love of God, to be able to bring healing, renewal, and hope to us when we are discouraged and brokenhearted. In the event, Thomas was not looking for a demonstration of a tool that could fix everything. Rather, he was looking for a reason to trust that God would connect with him and stay with him. As the story was written, he got scolded on our behalf for wanting proof so that he wouldn't have to trust. But what he actually did was to demonstrate that trust. He didn't say he needed proof of Jesus's power, what you might call sufficient knowledge that the tool works. Rather, he was asking for signs of the Jesus that he had known, the Jesus who had been with him, the Jesus who had chosen to love others rather than overpower or control them. He recognized that we start with insufficient knowledge of the heart, that higher organ, which from time to time catches us by surprise. Amen.
Please join me in the affirmation of faith that is found on page five in the worship guide. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now let me invite you to Pray for yourselves, for each other, for the whole community, and for the world. You'll do so uh, with me saying prayers out loud, and then Krista giving you a moment to reflect uh, with, with the support of her beautiful music. And then um, you should feel free to simply sit still and in silence, if that's how you'd like to, or share your prayers in the comments section. Let us pray for the church and the world. Loving God, you have set us in families and clans, in cities and neighborhoods. Our common life began in a garden, but our destiny lies in the city. You have placed us in and around Buffalo. This is our home. Your creativity is on display here through the work of human hearts and hands. We pray for Buffalo today, for the east side and the west side, North Buffalo and South Buffalo. We pray for our poorest neighbors and for powerful people in banks and businesses downtown. We pray for people from the First Ward and the Fruit Belt. We pray for neighboring communities from Olcott to Olean, from Angola to Albion, and a thousand other cities connected to our own. In all our neighborhoods this day, there will be crime and callous money-making. There will be powerful people unable or unwilling to see the vulnerable who are their neighbors. There will also be beautiful acts of compassion and creativity in all these places, forgiveness and generosity, neighbors working together for more just community. Help us see this place as something other than a battleground between us and them, where our imaginations are limited by win-lose propositions and endless rivalry. Show us a deeper reality. Oh God, show us your beloved community. We pray for the protection of all people around the world from the coronavirus and for those who care for the sick, for those who are helping us all get vaccinated, for those who have taken great personal risks to maintain the well-being and safety of others throughout the pandemic. We pray also for all others who are sick or lonely, all who are overwhelmed by difficult circumstances or trapped in harmful relationships. We pray for all who grieve and all who live in fear. We pray for all who are dependent on the compassionate care of others and for those who work tirelessly to care for the ones who are in need. Prosper our city and help us to trust that you are God. We pray in the name of the one who wept over your holy city. Amen.
the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet one another in the comments section. Peace to you all. Please feel free to continue to greet one another and share your prayers in the comments section. But you may want to uh, turn one or both of your ears this way for the next few minutes. It is my great pleasure to share the screen right now uh, and also to ask uh, Kara and Esther to uh, speak to you uh, in a, just a, a minute. Um, Kara Stratton is the housing post-release and court support coordinator at Justice for Migrant Families. And Esther Ogunmola is an asylum seeker who was detained at the detention center uh, in Batavia for two and a half years and was recently released with no preparations being made on her behalf uh, to, for her accommodation in any way. Uh, after she was released and Justice for Migrant Families was there to help her. And I'm not going to spoil the story, but I would like to ask them to speak uh, now to, uh, uh, and then when they have finished giving us sort of an update on her story and, and Justice for Migrant Families more generally, they'll stay around and join the after Facebook Zoom meeting that will begin when this part of our Sunday morning is over and we move to Zoom. And there you all will be able to see each other, everybody, and we'll be able to talk back and forth with them. So I hope you'll stay for that. For now, please give your attention to Kara and Esther. Thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna just speak briefly and then turn this over to Esther. Um, so Justice for Migrant Families, we do uh, direct support, organizing and advocacy for people impacted by the immigration system in Western New York. And I wanna just make two brief points today. The first one is um, how incredibly grateful we are for Trinity Episcopal Church and the community here. And the second is that um, immigrant detention is unnecessary and bad. So, <laughs> Um, the first is we, you know, we have been in partnership with Trinity Episcopal since 2016, since we first started. Um, and they, you have done so much um, for us. Um, our office space has been donated by Trinity. So we are able to have a phone number. We are able to get our mail there. When we were able to leave our house, we, we were able to work there. Um, Trinity was our fiscal sponsor while we were getting on our feet before we were able to become our own 501c3. 
Um, and <laughs> that was incredible help. Um, the Trinity Hospitality Group every year puts on this um, overwhelmingly huge um, volunteer appreciation dinner for all of the volunteers for justice for migrant families without whom our organization could not do the work that we do. Um, and it's an incredible, very moving event. Um, we've held trainings there and meetings and talks. And then most of all through Trinity Episcopal, I have met some of the most committed and passionate and generous volunteers I could ever imagine. Um, just really incredible people who I'm grateful for every day. So thank you so much for this opportunity for us both to speak here and thank you for everything you've done for these, gosh, four or five years now. Um, there is a lot that people can do right now. Uh, um, anything that you can think of, we need help. So I'm gonna be around afterward. If you're interested, you can also just email me. This goes like the range of things goes from helping me sort out the endless donations that we've been getting because people are so generous. Um, Esther has been doing this <laughs> um, with us um, to calling the field director of ICE and asking for people's freedom. So there's a huge range of activities, whatever your, your comfort level, if you're interested. And I just wanna give an update about one of the things that we've been working on a lot in the past, since January, 2021. Um, 2020 was a weird year for all of us. That's an understatement. Um, during that year, a lot of what we focused on was advocacy and trying to get people released because um, prison is not a good place um, to be when there's a pandemic. Um, and in all of 2020, there were 24 people released that we helped support. And by support, I mean, when they're released, they're, people are left at a gas station um, with not, without weather appropriate clothes, usually without money, without an ID, um, often having to navigate cultural and language barriers in the middle of Batavia to try to figure out where to go, um, without bus routes often happening after a certain amount of time. So we worked with a, a very dedicated group of volunteers to make sure people could be um, returned back to their families, could be safe for the night, could have food, could have warm clothes when it's winter. Since the beginning of this year, January, 2021, there have been over 50 people released and 36 of those people were just in March. So we've been very, very busy with this. Um, and two things um, I've been thinking about a lot after seeing all of these releases. And one is um, the incredible, powerful emotions of seeing all of these people who I never thought I would see um, being released. Um, seeing people who I never thought I would see outside of like a thick glass barrier, you know, over a bad phone. Um, People, I've seen people like holding their babies again after years. Um, I've seen people like laughing and um, back in their communities and able to do things with friends. Um, it has been such a miracle. It has been such a blessing. Um, the other thing it has shown me though that I've been thinking about a lot is that most of these releases have predominantly happened because a group of lawyers took um, the Batavia facility to court and sued them because of their of the bad conditions in Batavia and particularly around COVID. That is one of the reasons that all of this has been happening. And all of these people who have been detained some well over two years um, for coming here for seeking asylum for whatever reasons they were detained um, are suddenly just released. And without you know, just released to continue their immigration um, cases here. And it has just pointed out to me how unnecessary immigrant detention is in the first place and how cruel it is. And I'm gonna let Esther take it from there. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so privileged. I'm so happy to be here. 
to see everybody and then talk with everybody. Freedom is so great. I'm so happy. My journey started in 2018, April, when I came to the United States legally. So trying to go to Canada unsuccessfully, then they turned me back to the United States and my nightmares start from there. So I'm from Togo first, I'm from West Africa, from another detention to another detention, three, de three different detention and I ended up being in Batavia for two and a half years. The situation was so traumatic, so bad, in all the way, food, bad, the health system, bad, the immigration, is so complicated. The rules, the laws, so complicated. And me, as a new person in America, I don't know my rights. So after all, I know that if I knew my right from the beginning, I could have avoided being detained for two and a half years. That is a painful truth that I heard after, after all and hurt me still today. But I thank God that during the process, Joseph and my grandfather was able to help me. Every month, we get $25 for our food and our commissary account. And I'm so grateful to God that even when the weather is bad, they are here to visit. They are there to visit us. There are many volunteers. And this is the only thing is that when you go out of your unit, go to meet somebody, even if it's through glass and bad phone, you feel happy. You feel that some you cares again. Somebody, there's hope. Somebody cares about us. So that makes a complete difference during the week. And uh, even when the pandemic hit, they even reached out to us to video calls. And the video calls was not free, it was so expensive. But just for my grandfather, the volunteers, they were able to pay for that and talk to us. And every time you have like hurt issue, they don't want to take up take care of our hurt. We call Joseph for my grand family, they hire us and call and be like, you guys have to take care of these detainees, these immigrants. So I thank God for the, for the support for Joseph for my grand family and for Trinity. Because from Trinity, I got some, a good family that I'm living with now, Grandpa Big and Grandma Carol, I thank God for them, God bless them so much. And I'm so happy being in Buffalo, being free finally, being able to meet these people that have been helping me. I thank God for that. Immigration detention is unnecessary. It's unnecessary. And they make it so complicated. It's just like a vicious circle of wickedness toward immigrants, just to demoralize people, just to take away their hope of living. It's inhumane what they are doing in Batavia. So they made a circle that even the guards, the guards are there to tell you that this is prison, this is prison. But I'm not a, pri I'm not a criminal. Why are you putting me in prison? So they just want to mess up our mind, mess up who we are as a person. And it's so painful. It's, it's so upsetting that you come here just to seek for protection, just to seek for a better life. But we find that a, a hurtful truth that make us even doubt ourselves. But thank God that always I'm so grateful to God that this organization was able to help us through the whole system, the whole uh, time that I was there. And they, right now, there are a lot of people there. There's a hunger strike going on there. And then people need more support. And there's two other girls that still, they did not release that I'm really close to that are still there that I need help. So I'm so happy that I'm out, but I'm, it's, a, it's bittersweet because I want everybody to be out. I want people to live again. I want people to be happy and have a hope for a future. We come out from detention. They don't even give us any ID, nothing to help us to, to settle down. And thank God for Joseph and my family again that and the community of uh, Trinity and Hope of Fallow that helped us to settle down again, to have our fabulous life again, as Kara used to say. So I thank God for all of that. It's so horrible. That place is so horrible. In 
all the waste, nothing is good there, nothing. For our food, it's so nasty. It's a crap they are giving us to eat. For our clothing, it's bad. And nobody cares even whether you're sick or not, they don't care. And if you have high tolerance of pain, oh, that is great for them. They don't even care when you, have, you are in pain. The lawyers, they're trying their best. They're doing a lot for us to be out, for us to have a better life. The judges, they are so, so, so hard, so mean. The government attorney, we are in, in front of a judge, and then you are here, it's like you feel like the judge and the attorney, they're against you. And then it's, it put out in some situation that you don't even know what you are fighting for. It's like you lose a battle even before going in there. But thank, I, I always say thank God because without God, without the support of Joseph family, Joseph and my grand family, I wouldn't be here today. They tried to deport me. They took me to the airport. I came back. Joseph and my grand family was the one that made all of that happen to me. I thank God for that. Thank everybody in China, Trinity, for the help, for the support. And I, I'm begging everybody to remember that there are many people there that still need more support, that still need people to fight for them. Some don't have family here. I don't have family here like that. Some people I don't have family. And it's like just for my grand family, Trinity is my family. They are my family. So I will beg people to volunteer more, people to help us more so that we can stop this atrocity that is happening in the United States of America. This is a very blessed country, a very good country, the only country in the world that they say in God we trust. And that God is here to help all of us. So thank God for everything. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> So grateful to you for your witness, for your sharing your story. And um, it's, um, you know, the, the, the clearest thing that we're told as Christians is to love our neighbor as ourself. To love God with all your strength that's very simple to say, but God's kind of hard to get your hands around. And so it's complicated in your mind and in your heart. But when you hear a story of a neighbor in distress and you're told, oh, love your neighbor like yourself, that gives us, uh, gives us a little clarity. Thank you for sharing so much, so much. I want to share a couple of notes about uh, what's coming up. Um, a few weeks ago, uh, uh, Bruce McKay and Elena Delgado started a program on the art of listening, and that group uh, has gotten underway. They're going to meet again at, at the Zoom meeting following church next week. And if you were interested in it but weren't able to get started when they got started, I'm sure they'd love to, uh, to uh, wrap you into the whole thing. And so if you reach out to me by email, uh, I can connect you if you don't already have contact for Bruce. We don't like to put email addresses into the uh, Facebook live chat because it's wide open, but uh, reach out to me uh, or if you know how to get in touch with Bruce, do that. Otherwise, I'll help you get in touch with him to be part of the art of listening. Uh, also, I do want to mention uh, that the, um, the organization called Voice Buffalo that we have been a part of since it began uh, many, many years ago and then went through a rebirth uh, more recently. Uh, and, and Bruce is very connected with Voice Buffalo. Voice Buffalo is currently working on um, getting uh, signatures for a petition to get a ballot initiative on, Buffalo, on the Buffalo ballot this fall to, um, so that the reforms in Buffalo's policing can include community oversight that is actually able to have an effect that has the subpoena power and the ability to, to um, not just make idealistic recommendations, but to actually work with uh, the city on making the changes come to, come to pass. 
And that ballot initiative needs uh, signatures from Buffalo residents who are registered voters. And if you would like to sign that petition and help make that happen, um, go to the link in the comment section to, to sign that petition and to circulate, and circulate it among your friends if you want to do that too. If you're visiting today, especially because uh, Kara and Esther are visiting today, a very warm welcome to you. And if you'd like to be uh, on the uh, our weekly e-news uh, distribution list, you can go to Trinity's website, www.trinitybuffalo.org and click on a little button near the top of the page to sign up for the e-news. That is the most regular and most reliable communications form that we have. And so if you're not already receiving it, I urge you to sign up for that. Also, thank you so much for your ongoing financial support. Even though I'm just doing church from my house, the church building is still there and still staffed and still uh, being maintained. And uh, all of the other things that go into keeping Trinity functioning as a community. There are other bills to pay that are part of that. So donating to Trinity Church is, um, is really, uh, it has two dimensions. One, generosity is good for your own soul, but two, there are practical needs that we, that we maintain, even though it's not quite so visible because we're not in the building together. But we're hoping that will change in the next few months. Uh, and so your ongoing support is really crucial. And many of you gave generously over Easter. Thank you for that. Or bought Easter flowers, which was a little fundraiser. All of those things help. And you can donate online. There's a, a link in the comments section to our online donation page. You can just go right there and do it. If you prefer to mail in a check to the Trinity office, that takes longer, but it does get there. So let me encourage you to do that if that's your preference. And remember that your financial support is only part of the way that you are offering from yourself, from your heart and your soul to be part of the Trinity community and part of the presence of God in the world. As Esther has so amazingly shown us, there's so much that we can do to be the hands and feet of God's love in the world. And I want to encourage you to think of everything you do as having that potential. It is not only helpful to loving our neighbors, it is also to the glory of God. And the other thing that we do here to glorify God is make a musical offering. So don't think of this as merely something for you to be inspired by, although it's that, but it is also your offering to God's glory, an offering of thanks and praise. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Now, as Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Gracious God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Now the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work to do God's will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in God's sight. And may the blessing of God who made us, who loves us, and who animates and guides us be with you now and always. Amen. So just before we sing the final hymn, let me remind you that after the final hymn and the, the postlude, um, we will open the Zoom meeting where we gather for online communion and for conversation following the Facebook live stream. So we'll be doing that today. Kara and Esther will be there. We'll start with communion just for the first couple of minutes and then be able to talk more about uh, what they were telling us about. So in the meantime, please join in singing the great Easter hymn, We Walk by Faith and Not by Sight.
take your leave, trusting that we are made one in Christ to shine in the world with God's light. Alleluia, alleluia. I'll see you in Zoom in just a few minutes.